Welcome writers, I'm author Justin Swap, and I'm here today to talk to you about a super flexible, very helpful tool for writers to organize their ideas and their work called Trello. Oh, and it's free too. Let's dive in. All right, writers, today we're going to be talking about Trello. You can either go to Trello.com or you can go to the iTunes store or the Google Play store, you know, depending on whether we're talking about you wanting access through a phone or through your computer or what have you, all the major uh, app stores, you know, the Mac App Store, they all have uh, either an app or you can get to Trello through the website Trello.com. But Trello is basically a, a platform that you can either use individually or on a team kind of basis to collaborate. You create objects, these, these cards, and you put them on boards and lists. And it's really flexible and it gives you a ton of opportunity to kind of organize however you want to. So I'm just going to come up and down the page really quick so you can see, you know, if you want to connect with people online and work as a team, you know, if you're co-writing a book or you, you have some kind of a co-authored project, each of you can contribute however you decide to organize around that. And then you can shuffle the work around or make assignments, those kinds of things. Again, you've got information at a glance uh, with this easy kind of card and board format we'll get into here momentarily. They've got some automation that they've recently put in the platform. We probably won't get into a ton of that today. But in the end, you have this nice platform. And, and one of the things that I like the most is that it's cross-platform. So if I'm on a Mac, you know, my personal workflow is I use a Mac for a computer, a MacBook, but then I have an Android phone. And typically, if you're going to be on, um, you know, iCloud, you've got to have all Apple devices for your information to transfer. And this is something where it's cross-platform which is super nice in my opinion. So if you don't have an account, you'll need to register. If you do, you just log in. So you click on the, the login button or the sign up button, depending on what your scenario is. Uh, you can log in or create an account with an email and a password if you want, or you, know, you can go through the standard flow where you're using your Google account or your Microsoft or your Apple accounts. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so this is the welcome screen or the home screen, if you will, of the Mac uh, app version of Trello. So I've pre-created before this recording some boards. You can see there's a section here for recently viewed boards and then the personal boards. If I star something it'll show up here in the recently viewed or I can have it surface to the top. But I, I wanted to be able to showcase a couple of different ways you might be able to use Trello in your writing to kind of germinate some thought process and, and show you some of the flexibility behind some of the concepts. But while we're on the screen, you know, you've got boards, you've got templates. So if you wanted to uh, kind of search their template store, if you will, it might take a second here to load. Um, you'll see that there are pre-made templates that you can download uh, into your boards and leverage their formatting or whatever. And so there's all kinds of different things here for business or design or whatever but I've created some stock boards but I wanted to show you that they have kind of a a template store if you will uh, that you could go into a lot of those are free uh, some of them might not be uh, you'd have to go in and look but anyway uh, I can click this boards button and I can have another quick kind of access to the boards that I've already created but I'll go back to the home just to show you the navigation here a little bit uh, again if you're going to take a teamwork approach you can create a team that's not what we're going to be doing here today I'm I'm approaching this as if you're an author who wants to consider using this individually uh, for your own to organize your own thoughts and your own writing and that kind of thing. So I'm going to start with a Kanban board. I don't know if uh, you guys have heard of a Kanban board. This idea I think originally started with developers as they were trying to um, think about user stories and how they solve problems in software. And so, how do you understand what's going on or what a user is experiencing? Can I collect those stories? And this is kind of, as you can see, has like a sticky note uh, format to it. And so they would collect the stories and, and think about them and log them and then decide which ones made uh, the most sense or that they could get to the easiest or that could have the largest impact on the end user experience. And so that turned into a to-do. And then as cycles became available for people to be able to work on things, it turned into an in-progress uh, item and then as it got worked on and, and got done they tested it to make sure it was still good and then it's done done right so that's that's a Kanban board it's a concept that's out there it's interesting when you think of it in terms of um, writing you know now if I were to take that 
from a from a writing standpoint and say okay well what are some things that I might be working on if I'm working on a novel I might need to figure out what characters I'm gonna have uh, if it's a short story I may only have a few characters if it's a novel I'll have many more I might think about settings I might think about something uh, you know a little more narrow a little more intricate like an inciting incident um, you know what happened there and what's interesting is you know if I decide I'm working on it now I might drag it from here to here and just say it's on my to-do list or I might move it to in progress or I might get so far and I have that character fleshed out and developed that I might move it here so you can just see at a high level you know you can create these lists you know test list or whatever and I can delete the list if I want to archive it and then I can move things around and so as far as creating you know giving something shape so that I can think about it and organize around it uh, and I can move things around in it that becomes interesting as far as if you're a visual uh, organizer and this helps you kind of stay on task or or move forward and those kinds of things so here we have a board this board is the Kanban board we have these lists you can call them whatever you want I call you know the stories and you can see you can easily edit that there create that there um, I click anywhere um, and I can add that I can hit the plus button up here create a board um, but what's interesting is now these these lists have cards in them which are these little things that I can move around here I can also click on them and then I can open them up and inside the card I can go a level deeper a layer deeper on the detail um, so I again if I have a teamwork kind of a scenario I'm, I'm collaborating on something I might add members you know there's me I might add somebody else and invite them to my board and they could log into the same board and contribute add cards move cards those kinds of things uh, I might add labels you can see I've added a label here called plot I just hit the um, create new label titled it plot colored it purple and then now I have a way where on the outside this kind of zoomed out version of the board I if, if I know that that's a plot color I now know that okay this is a plot dynamic or a plot card and that may you know filter into my thinking a little bit as I'm thinking about how to move it around or where it goes and and those kinds of things uh, if I wanted to create a list I could hit checklist name a list and then I can start adding items right and then as I do the things I can check them off and I can make progress against them so it might be um, this is inciting incident one um, you know the main character does something something and then once I've done that check it off and boom I know I've progressed against whatever my idea was for uh, that incident or the inciting incident or whatever it was so that's kind of the Kanban board at a high level super simple okay so we've looked at the Kanban board uh, again that was just a way we decided to organize it let's go in a totally different direction let's say we wanted to follow the hero's journey plot structure so I've come in here and you might notice this time I have a background on it now if you wanted to create backgrounds there's a, a place where you can download backgrounds here if I hit change background and photos you know they're partnering with unsplash and there's all kinds of different um, uh, backgrounds of styles you know I had typed in hero here for the hero's journey and boom there's that background that I got didn't cost me anything I just added it so it can create a bit of an ambiance and a bit of an environment if that if that's exciting to you and that helps keep you motivated and sucks you into it a little bit but you know if I'm gonna uh, if I'm a writer and I've decided I'm gonna follow the hero's journey uh, monomyth I've written down the the dynamics of the, the monomyth the ordinary world call to adventure and I've created a card and I did this in just you know 10 seconds and just said okay I need to establish the regular world uh, for ordinary world so I can come into there and decide how am I going to do that what are the dynamics that I'm going to bring up um, what are the world elements that I can bring out in the writing a little bit you know call to adventure and I just made this up you know there's a, there's an encounter with an old witch um, you know she she tries to get me to go somewhere the main character to go somewhere um, but the, the main character runs away refusal of the call turns out later oh the, the witch was the mentor and so maybe they have to come back together again and reconcile that or you know and you can go on and on crossing of the threshold you know the thresholds in the witch's hut um, you know and, you know maybe I'm thinking of a middle grade story here or something like that but you could go on and on you can see how you can organize um, Trello 
and these uh, lists and these cards in any way that you want. All right, let's check out another one. What if I want to follow a three-act structure? So again, I've I've uh, got another background on here, kind of author, writer, book themed, uh, kind of fun, simple enough. I created a list called Act One, a list called Act Two, you know, a list called Act Three. I could rename that if I want to, uh, or whatever, and I can start dropping in scenes. You know, um, there's obligatory scenes. You know, maybe some genre conventions or whatever. Uh, you know, I've genericized it right now with scene, but maybe this is, um, you know, instead of calling it scene, I call it call to adventure, kind of like we were just talking about. So suddenly that now says call to adventure. Uh, I can move these in any order that I want. So you can see that there's a ton of flexibility and really you start with a blank canvas and you start adding shape to it. Um, you know, when I was in school, there was uh, a professor that said, you know, how do we solve problems? And problems can get really overwhelming, and they're especially overwhelming, and you know this if you're a writer, writing a book or writing a story is no small task. But he said, you know, uh, if you can name something and you can give it shape, you can have power over it. And that thought never really left me. That, that was always a very powerful thought to me. And so here you have a tool that's letting you name the thing and give shape to the thing and hopefully this will let you have power over it so when you think of a three-act structure that might seem you know very overwhelming and wow what do I do but you know you you name it and you give it shape act one okay well I'm a step closer to having some shape well what happens in act one and you start asking yourself the writer questions who what when why and how all those kinds of things and then you start writing some things down and and there's something about kind of the pliability of these little cards that you can move them and delete them and rename them that make them fun to play with and they kind of draw you in and uh, they're editable so nothing feels fixed you know you write something in with pen and paper and that that ink bleeds and it's there and that feels a little different here where I can just come in here and just rename something right uh, and click on it and just call it whatever I want to whatever I want to call it and it can make you happy all right, next let's go into a book Bible kind of scenario. If you're writing a novel, things get a little crazy. Um, you know, if it's a 75,000 word manuscript or 100,000 word manuscript, like, there's a lot going on. So being able to keep track of your characters, you know, does do you call Johnny your main character, Johnny in chapter one, but you, you called him Jonathan in chapter three. Is that what you meant to do? Um, you know, you would maybe make note of that in in your little character card here. Are his eyes blue in chapter two and they're green in chapter three? Um, you know, you'd want to be able to track that stuff and be able to remember it. And if you ever needed to call back to it rather than searching your whole manuscript, which could get tricky, uh, if you've done that, you've, you've run into that. But being able to come back here and have one place where all things main character are right here, that becomes very powerful and saves you a ton of time. You know, so it's setting, world building dynamics. You know, I've got an airport here. You know, what's going on with the airport? Oh, there was an EMP. You can't use the airport. The airport doesn't work. The airplanes don't work. Um, you know, are there cultural things? If you're writing sci-fi or fantasy or speculative fiction, you know, is there some culture dynamics you need to log here? So you're starting to get the sense for, you know, the, the flexibility that the tool offers you and all the maybe different ways you can use it. Now, functionally, you know, if I click this little star here, and go back to the main board, you'll see that suddenly now there are starred boards. I didn't have any boards starred before, but now I do. And it makes it so, as you can see, like you might have a ton of different boards. You might have your, your Kanban board or a parking lot or a hero's journey, you know, whatever board you created at, at the given uh, writing process point in time that you needed to create to get through it and get on to the next thing. Well, suddenly you might have a bunch of boards, like, you know, in preparing for this video, you know, I've already got four or five boards right here. And so I might want to surface one to the top so I don't have to kind of sift through everything and find my way to the board that I'm looking for. The ones that either matter the most to me right now or I just want to be able to find easier, I might star them and surface them to the top. Um, and then real quick, I was going to show you, you know, parking lot. I don't know if you've heard this term before, but if you're, um, you know, just trying to get ideas out of your head and down onto paper, or down onto to something in this case an app so that you can keep your headspace you know free and clear to work on your story 
and feel like you know you didn't lose any ideas that you had you could come in here and you know again put main character you start logging ideas uh, or whatever and then you could move them into okay I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna bring this into my story or I'm not gonna bring this into my story or what have you so this is another place where you can do that so let's start getting into um, you know some more of the the details on the cards themselves so we talked a little bit earlier about members you know if you wanted to collaborate and invite people to your board and let them come in and edit cards and move cards and all the things that I've been kind of showing you um, you know you can come in here and create labels I mentioned that a little bit earlier you could use this for phases of your book you know act one act two act three you could you know label these phases of the hero's journey if that's a plot structure that you're using you could label these characters right villains heroes you know you could I mean there's all kind I mean anything you could create as far as a label goes you could name it and color it and uh, and apply it to here and then visually that will be in play um, on the outside of the cards and so again that might help you move things around or visually organize things um, there's checklists right we showed that a little bit earlier uh, if you want to name a checklist um, if you wanted to give something uh, due dates, you know, we can show you that here in a minute um, But on checklists You know and as you check them off you get that little nice progress bar. It's kind of fun It actually shows on the outside here, too uh, As you've made your you've completed the different parts of your checklist. That's kind of fun So there's a real sense of you know visual indicators and visual progress If you want to set a due date, this is actually a really neat feature, you know as a writer, you know deadlines, right? So whether it's a deadline uh, for your whole manuscript or a deadline for a scene or a deadline for you know a part you know part one of a book or part two or a chapter whatever the unit of work is you can come in here and set up reminders and all those kinds of things to, to keep you on top of your work and so you can see here there's a reminder there and it'll come at you and it'll, it'll, it'll alert you and send a little tickler out there if you're tracking or not or what have you. Um, if you wanted to add attachments, so this can be a word file or you know whatever the document or whatever the file is that you want, you can attach files to the cards. Um, you know, again, if you're collaborating, maybe somebody wrote a word doc and they want to attach it to this, and you come in later and you get their word doc. Um, if you want to add a cover to uh, the card, you can. So you see, I just clicked on one of these unsplash things, and now I've got. A lot of visual stuff going on here I have an actual scene if if you will so that could be kind of cool if you were coming up with a background or if you had a, a character portrait that you got off the internet somewhere and you, you know you have an actor or somebody in your mind's eye for what your character might look like that might help you represent that on that card a little bit more it's totally up to you but you're starting to see kind of the flexibility and the power uh, of the cards and of these different things um, so then you've got actions here that you can you can take you can templatize something make it a template and make it reusable Move it copy it watch it etc. So come in here and play around with it a little bit again. It's free. It's a really neat tool um, It you know it Doesn't cost you anything. I think you'll find that you can get up to speed in how you use it really quickly um, And I think it, it's very inviting um, you know, you put a little background, create some cards, create some lists, and suddenly you're like, wow, this is pretty powerful. This is really going to help me in my writing. It's going to help me structure my thinking, maybe even structure my activities. Suddenly I've got due dates, suddenly I've got color coding, and you're really involved in this. So I would really encourage you to give it a try if you haven't, if you're looking for some way to organize your thinking, uh, your, your workload, to break it down into small chunks, maybe even collaborate. I think Trello is a really neat tool. Uh, this was a really high level overview uh, you know there are if you get into the butler stuff that we talked about earlier some automated um, actions that you can take that that wasn't really the purpose of this video just know there's more to it and the more of that kind of stuff that you can get into you know they find their little ways to charge you here and there but everything that I described today that you watched me do is free and you can do it readily and it, it's super powerful uh, and I, in my opinion really easy to get to to know and to use so Hopefully you like this video, like and subscribe. Uh, I'll keep bringing you some more stuff like this and uh, good writing.